So everything is inseparable from opening intelligence. <laughs> That's a new, uh, amazing, simple twist on the term open intelligence that Candice has uh, been using recently and I find it really incredible and I'm actually quite jealous that I didn't think of it myself. <laughs> but isn't that always the way? The best ideas are the most simple. Um, and it's very easy to complicate uh, what you hear in the training, especially in the talks, and to think about what you hear. But if you always bring it back to the simplicity of relying on the four mainstays, and that's just as simple as, you know, however you want to do that. So you've got short moments, and the short moment, it's so powerful. In the beginning, um, it might seem like it's a bit of a nothing practice. So the practice of short moments repeated many times until it becomes automatic. In the beginning, uh, the introduction to how to recognize open intelligence in, in our own experience is just to stop thinking. And when we do that, in our experience, there is still something there, a, a presence, an openness. Um, it, it might be quite subtle, but there's, there's, there's something there. Um, and in the balance view training we call this open intelligence and the practice of short moments is just to uh, recognize that, relax and recognize that innate quality about yourself whenever you remember. And so that's really the only instruction. All of the other four mainstays are there just to support you in gaining confidence in this practice. Now right from the very beginning when I came to this practice I was full of anger and hatred and frustration just spewing it everywhere. It was, it, was, it was sarcasm mainly was the way it would come out. Um, because I, I couldn't find any well-being in my own experience. And uh, therefore, and, and I've been very successful and I tried many of the things that uh, people told me would lead to happiness, like in, an intimate relationship, for example, and things like this. And I was still, uh, there was something missing, so I wasn't able to find a relief from this frustration in rearranging my data and so when I met people who, s who seemed to say that they, they had found uh, happiness or well-being that made me even more angry and frustrated and I, I would do my best to make them as miserable as possible <laughs> because that gave me some relief and uh, it's, it's very very painful to, be, to, to, to live that way and um, so that was my approach and, and everyone can relate to that, that, that like self-hatred. Might, you might not call it self-hatred. You could call it just dislike or discomfort. But when you really get down to it, and especially when you start to just allow things to be as they are, what you might find is that, wow, I'm actually full of quite negative uh, opinions about the world, myself, other people. Um, and this has been going on for so long that we just don't even notice it. We're just, we're just hypercritical all of the time. Um, the first thing that comes up in a situation and a circumstance that might be you know, difficult, it, the first things that come up it usually are negative thoughts. And um, now the great power of the, the practice of short moments and the four mainstays is that it doesn't matter what is coming up in, in our thoughts, emotions and circumstances. Now that, that completely is different to the way we've approached life before. It doesn't matter what, what is occurring in terms of your data. It doesn't matter. Is that quite annoying? <laughs> because we've believed, we've believed that, that that is the most important thing in our lives. It absolutely does matter what happens with our data and we must control our data in order for it to be the way we want it to be. So if you're expecting your, f your father, for example, to change the way he behaves in order for your well-being, that isn't going to happen until for the entirety of your relationship with your father. Uh, I guarantee it. And so it's, ve it's very, very simple. You, 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 you have a power in, in these situations and circumstances to just bring the focus back to open intelligence to the relaxed ease of open intelligence and just to see how amazing your parents are, you know. You are and will always be their baby. It's never going to change. 
you know, even some, you know, like Barack Obama, you know, his parents, yeah. he's a baby, he's their baby, you know, for two or three years they had, they had to change his underpants, wipe his bottom, you know, that's quite a long time. And so if you've had a relationship with a human being like that, it's very difficult to say, oh, wow, yeah, he's the president of the USA. You know, cause it so it's, it's really important to see what our parents give us. Even if, um, even if you have a, uh, maybe a difficult relationship with your parents or um, you know, perhaps your parents m may have even physically abused you, the bottom line is that they gave you life um, and they supported you as best they could. Now, I, I, know, I know many of you probably have children um, here, but um, now, I, for those of you who don't have children, can you imagine if you, you've got all of your data and then you have this, this little human being that comes along that you, I'm sure you think is going to be the solution to all of your problems. Um, were you the solution to your parents' problems? <laughs> it's just absolutely not. I know I wasn't, <laughs> and uh, and so so you have all of your data, and as the child grow, grows up, you have an idea of what you would like the child to be like. But I'm pretty sure, almost, I would say 100% of parents, their children don't end up exactly the way they they dreamt of or thought of. I mean, maybe that that does happen occasionally, but. Um, you know, you don't. You, the, the child is is its own entity. So you, the parents have their data, and now they've got the child's data. They've got their partner's data. Then, but the, you see, the crazy thing is, what what, us, what usually happens is, oh God, let's have another child. That'll be the solution. <laughs> <laughs> and it just goes on and on and on like this. And and so, we we have many uh, data streams that we pin all of our hopes on. And an intimate relationship is another one. If I get into an intimate relationship, then all of my problems will be solved, or at least many of my problems will, will improve. And uh, that isn't the case. So when Candice talks about intimate relating on a conventional level, um, you know, everyone is free to do whatever they want, but if you're looking for well-being in an external source, you will always be disappointed because it is not located there. And uh, you all know this. Every single intimate relationship you, you have, I can only share my own experience, follows the same pattern on a conventional level. It's really amazing, totally incredible. The world looks like heaven. You like everyone you meet, even the people that you don't like. And then with, within a few weeks or months, that falling in love feeling sort of disappears and gets uh, less and less. Um, and then you're back to normality and but you've got this other person and all of their data as well. And, you know, it just goes on and on and on and generally it deteriorates to the point where the person that you once worshipped, you actually can't stand to be with much of the time. And um, now this is my experience with most of my intimate relationships. I'm, of course, not saying that's, that's the case with everyone, but I was always putting all of my hopes on the relationship and the other person to provide me with happiness and uh, it just wasn't the case. So when you're introduced to the practice of open intelligence, it doesn't matter whether you're in an, in an intimate relationship or not, you can keep it very, very simple. You rely on the four mainstays and how, however you want to, you know, if you're, if you're in, a, in, a, in an intimate relationship or if you're overcome with anger or, or frustration, the, the four mainstays is an algorithm that just it always leads to the same result. Now it might be in the beginning that you can't rest with anger, you know, like you just you just blow your top and it's just overwhelming. That was my that was my experience. But just by relying on on short moments and like things like uh, the trainings, coming here with the community, reading texts, listening to talks, just by doing that and and uh, peppering it throughout your day, you know, maybe listen to 20 minutes while you walk to work and 20 minutes when you walk home from work and have a talk on in the background and things like this and do a few clarity calls each week. I mean, my experience of that simple, it's just, it's like ridiculous. It's like um, there isn't anything else in life that's going to give you such an incredible sense of well-being and ease than the four mainstays. Like, I always say this, but if, if, uh, 
if, if we said, if you rely on the four mainstays, say you do two clarity calls a week, you listen to an hour of talks a, um, a day, and then um, read some of the books every day and, and hang out with the community twice a week, if you can, um, and then maybe visit one of the gatherings, and at the end of the year you would get 100,000 euros, everyone would be four mainstays crazy. <laughs> you know, they, they'd just be just, just, oh yeah, yeah, I love the four mainstays, and they just have this vision of a big, you know, suitcase full of cash <laughs> at the end of the year that they're going to get. But you see, what's on offer here, like well-being in every moment, is so much more valuable than a briefcase full of bits of paper. You know, you can really ask yourself, where is, uh, where is well-being located in a pile of money? You know, if there was like uh, 10,000 euros here. Now, when I th when I, if I, I imagine that, I see things like motorbikes and <laughs> big computers and computer games and... Uh, chairs with fridges in the side <laughs> to put my drinks in, you know, all, all of these things. And, and uh, you know, obviously, th there is some well being in those sorts of things, but it's very, it's very clear that that isn't the answer. You know, having lots of stuff is not the answer. And, um, and so, it, it's, it's very important that you, you, you just, just allow yourself which, I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here, everyone is doing this, but however, however you can, and however is easiest for you, just test the support, use the support that's offered here. Now, when I, when I started uh, in, in this training, I'd had almost 20 years of what I believe to be similar sorts of trainings, you know, people coming together and talking about the nature of reality, and that didn't give me any relief whatsoever, it just filled my head with clever ideas about the nature of reality without the experience of the nature of reality. So when I came, when I came to my first Balance View open meeting, I was extremely cynical because I thought the instruction of short moments was just yet another instruction that just wasn't going to work. And so when I said that, and I was expecting a, an argument, but I, I didn't get that. I just, uh, Candy said, oh, that's fine. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. Just show up. And, and I was like, wow, you know, this is my kind of practice. I, I can just <laughs> turn up. And, uh, and my, my version of turning up in the beginning was to get a mattress at the back of the open meeting and just go to sleep. And it still had a really profound effect. I was asleep and snoring in the back of the open <laughs> meeting. And, and, and my, my recognition of open intelligence was, was just, just grew and grew. And then, so from that, you know, just showing up in the laziest possible way, <laughs> and it still has an effect. Then I, then, then I was saying, well, if this works, then maybe this short moments thing will work. And then if, if the sh and, and it did. And, and the amazing thing was, was that um, the power of short moments is that you can see, even, r even f for those of you who are right at the beginning of the empowerment, on empowerment three, the, the practice of short moments empowers you to recognize open intelligence. And, and what is it that's empowering you to do that? It's, it's your data. It's your thoughts, your emotions, and your circumstances. And they don't need to change. I mean, how amazing is that? It doesn't mean that you, you won't want things to change. That's not what this training is about. There, there are many, many things that you, 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 you want to change in yourself and in the world. But you probably can't do it. So it's much easier to just allow these things to be as they are and bring your focus back to the relaxed ease at the basis of your experience whenever you remember, even if it's only once or twice a day. And, uh, and, and so right from the beginning, you're introduced to, to, the, to the experience that you, you don't need to change in order to practice what's offered here. And then everything else, uh, the, the, the teacher, the, the training, the community, all of that, um, is just a, an infinite resource that you can use to support your own confidence in this simple practice. So I've gone from complete self-loathing of myself and the world to just being head over heels in love with myself. And um, it's just, it, like I shared at the beginning, in, uh, before this training, all I saw was frustration and anger and discomfort in myself, and that's what I saw in others. 
when you start to see that you're, you're actually the greatest human being that's ever walked the planet and you're totally in love with yourself and everything you do is amazing, even the most ridiculous things that you've done in your life is, is like um, evidence of total perfection, then that's what you start to see in everyone else. And it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to be able to be with people that you actually hate and, and feel totally in love with them wanting to help them, wanting to contribute to what they're doing. And so if you're, uh, you know, the parents thing is, an, is a great example. With my, my, f my father still sometimes will, uh, if I'm doing something, he'll hit my hands out of the way and do it for me. Now I'm 45 <laughs> and uh, you can imagine, you, you know, it's just like, I'm just like <laughs> overcome with just speechless. I can't actually, actually say anything. It's like, it's, uh, and, 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 and the love, the inseparability of the love that I feel in that circumstance is just overwhelming. And so, a, a very practical thing would be to, like you say, just offer, offer help. And if he would like to do it, if he wants to do it all himself, then that's great. Go and have a cup of tea. <laughs> and, uh, but you know, there are probably many things around the house and we, in, in, your, in your family uh, group that you could just get on and do yourself, you know, like cleaning out the garage or something or cutting the grass you know, where, the, where you don't need to be asked and it may well be that he comes running out of the house and stops you and you go, what are you doing you don't do it like that this is how you do it you know <laughs> but you see all, all of all of the motivation of parents is is is, is, the, is it's just it just comes from complete undying unconditional love for your well-being and we we've become so used to you know, believing that we need to be acknowledged in a certain way by our parents. Why don't they see me as an adult? And they never will. You know, they, they never will. But your, your example of uh, confidence in open intelligence and love and gratitude is, 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 is way more powerful than, you know, being acknowledged by your parents for what you're doing or whatever. Because um, what, what happens is sometimes they'll acknowledge you and sometimes they won't. It's just, you know, it's, uh, it's not something to base well-being on. And my relationship with my parents is, is so amazing now. It's like having the best friends ever. And, um, you know, like, like, like always, the best friends ever are usually the most annoying friends ever. It's just the way it is. But the, the solution is to, you, 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 you're empowered just to allow that all to be. And ev eventually, and eventually means I would say within three, four years, it's all outshone in complete relaxation and total <coughs> love. And it, it doesn't mean that you don't, you, you know, if, if something that really needs to be said, you, you say it, you know, like I might say, well, you, you know, I'm not an idiot. I can actually, you know, take the top off my boiled egg myself. <laughs> you know, could you please leave me alone? That's fine to say as well. But it, 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 when it comes from the complete ease and appreciation and gratitude, then the whole of family life is just complete joy instead of complete torture. And, and this applies to ev everything in life. It just, it, everything becomes, is revealed to be heaven on earth, basically, even the things that you really don't like. And so, it's just so obvious. If nothing needs to change, then everything must be evidence of perfection. And this is what we're, this is what we're um, recognizing gradually. So, so it's the natural state. Everything is an inseparable expanse of perfect love. That is the natural state. We're not creating it by, by, by participating in the 12 empowerments or doing these trainings. We're just recognizing the nature of reality as it is. It's not a set of descriptions. And so short, short moments in the four mainstays will gradually reveal this perfection in your own experience. And the amazing thing is it never stops getting more and more perfect. I mean, logically that makes no sense, but um, you know, if something's already perfect, it can't be more perfect. Perfection is perfection. You see, these are the kinds of things that I used to think about, and thank God I don't have to think about them anymore. Just let things be as they are, and you'll, and you'll gradually recognize this in your own experience. It's really awesome. <laughs>